The Arcturus Heavy Duty Survival Blanket. Comes in olive drab green and blaze orange. What's up warriors? It's Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training. Here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and YouTube will let you know when the next video drops so you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick review today of not just the uh, Arcturus survival blanket, but some of the upgrades that I made to it to make it serve its purpose a little bit better. Um, this was a requirement to have at uh, Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder School. I went out there for the basic class. You could check out the review I have on that. It was an amazing class. Um, completely like surpassed all my expectations and really like it made sure it reminded me of which things I knew pretty well and um, you know re reassured me that I had been like learning quality stuff along the way and, and passing stuff on filled in a lot of blanks and really helped me, uh, I don't know, up my game considerably, just, just taking a basic class. So one of the things you had to have to go there was uh, one of these blankets. So I, I've, had, uh, I've had one in the past, didn't use it all that much. Uh, knowing I was going out there for the course, I uh, spent some time in the dirt uh, a few weeks earlier, brought this and practiced with it, trained with it, you know, just uh, set up some shelters and I had a good experience. I didn't really beat the hell out of it um the way we did in in uh in the survival school but uh i wanted to make sure that, you know that it, it worked it was they're 20 bucks man it's it's uh not a very expensive piece of gear but it's not designed to be something that you're going to use pack away use again pack away it's like survival um insurance policy that's the best way to put it like it should be something that you set up and you have it like in your car or wherever you're going to be going and it's just like part of your like you have a spare tire in the car you have something in case you need to get up a quick shelter uh wrap yourself in it because it's got a mylar side to uh retain uh you know your core body temperature and, and all that stuff um but again there were a few things that that i noticed at the school uh during the class everybody had these or something similar and some of the spots where it was failing under duress, when uh, you had to do a lot of time to exercise and you had to like get a fire going and boil water quick and all this other stuff and get a shelter going in a you know, very short frame of time. And I think when people were trying to like attach the tarp to their ridge line and they were like yanking on it and cranking and all of a sudden the grommet started to fail, not everybody, but it, it was a thing. So um, in like reviewing it and like talking with each other and talking with Dave and the instructors there, uh, a good idea was to reinforce the grommets and stuff. So I'll show you the blanket. I'll show you the, the upgrades I made. Um, that it, It's real simple, it's, it's not hard. It's things that I think that Arcturus should do on their own. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Um, but again, it's, it's not a piece of like, hey, my, my camping gear. You know, I have a, a oil skin tarp that I love a lot. I have a uh, Helicon Tex lightweight tarp that I like a lot. And this is cool for a lot of reasons, but again, it should be looked at like as uh, something that's replaceable. You're going to set it, forget it, and God forbid you need it. You take it out and you're not fiddling with a lot of the things that will help make you get your shelter going a lot faster uh, when seconds count. All right? So uh, let's get after it. So for, right off the bat, um, I actually just picked up a second one to set up for uh, an emergency pack that I keep in my vehicle. And I went with the blaze orange one because most of my gear, just about all of my gear, is very like secret squirrel, olive drab green, uh, woodland camouflage, multicam, black. It's just very like camp and hike and all that stuff. I like to be incognito. That's my, I just like that. I'm out there for me. I'm not out there to, you know, draw a crowd. However, a lot of the times that you would probably need this, um, you would be hoping to find somebody to come over and help you, I would imagine. So what I did was instead of going with the uh, olive drab green, I went with their blaze orange one. And the other parts that kind of make this like a set it and forget it thing, the things we're going to add to it, um, I also went with orange because I really wanted as much high vis uh, pieces to the to kit as I could. So off the bat. Um, it comes in this 
bag, which I was only able to fold this thing up and put it back in this bag once. And that was before I used it. I took it out, inspected it, and then folded it up right along the exact fold that it comes with. But once I used it um, uh, upstate before I went out to the, the survival school, I, I couldn't get this thing back in. It was, it was too much work. It was dirty. It was a little bit wet. It was just like whatever. And the bag on this, it was starting to rip. And I was just, instead of just messing with it, I figured I could always use the bag by itself as a standalone thing, maybe to you know, hold some other stuff. But um, I'll set this up to show you. But I'll try to get it back in here. If it doesn't go back in there, I'm not, I'm not going to stress over it. Again, I'm also trying to add more things to it. And there's a million other bags that I could do that with. So the bag itself, cool. I think they could have and should have made it a little bit bigger. But uh, it's the same material. It's got this Mylar re heat reflective material on the inside. Um, and again, it's, it's not real thick. They're, they're not made to be, uh, you know, last you forever. It is a five by seven five feet by seven feet blanket basically tarp material um, again you get this this orange bright orange on one side reflective on the other which again you could use this for signaling help um, if you were out in the woods I mean you maybe would have to get out from under the canopy of the trees or whatever but um, it's a reflective quality to it that you could use either for reflecting light or something shiny to, you know, that definitely is in contrast with the, the ground around you. Or you use this to reflect, if you get a fire going, you use that to reflect the heat from the fire back on yourself. Um, you could roll yourself up in it and use it like a, um, that space bivy type of thing. Um, and this side, again, if you wanted to, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna put some, uh, get some Gorilla Tape and put some big X's on the back to, again, let somebody traveling overhead, if they were spotting down or looking for you by helicopter or whatever, um, you down in a ditch or whatever, if somebody spots it and sees the three X's, it's a, it's a sign that you, you need help and you, you, you're like, now, please, please come help. So, a couple of things. The grommets were plenty big enough, I thought, for when I started making um, make these utilities, I take a six foot line, I'll show you how I do it, and I feed it through there, and it was working okay. And um, my other shelters that I use from like tarps and stuff like that, I usually like, um, I don't have the lines attached ahead of time. Some of them I have stakes that I use or bring, and I have, you know, have it in my pack. Other times you could just fashion a stake out of, you know, find some sticks and carve them right. Um, so when I use these, oftentimes I have uh, some paracord just loops that I attach to it so that I could pull this out of the ground without pulling by the tarp or my, you know, uh, my more expensive stuff that I don't want to rip. Not that it would rip, but I don't want to risk it. I'd rather just abuse the, the stakes that are cheap enough and, and not abuse my tarp. This, what we're going to do is we're going to take some utility lines and tie it to these holes. So, again, when everybody was setting their, their tarps up, like, for, for time, you went on this uh, navigate, navigation, uh, land navigation course, come back, you think you got some time, and all of a sudden they're like, all right, you have 15 minutes to do A, B, C, and D. And you had to get a fire going and boil, uh, not, not an analogy in one, but a steel container, uh, two steel containers of water, and demonstrate it was four shelters. So you had to get a ridge line up. And once a lot of guys were like really like in a rush trying to get their shelter up, a lot of the grommets started to fail. So, I mean, it's a decent amount of like uh, material from the corner to the tarp itself. This like, it's a, uh, I guess a canvas, but again, it, it started to pull. It's not the strongest thing in the world. And it's 20 bucks, I wouldn't expect it to do that. So, the other thing was a lot of shelters that I put together that I like to use with the tarp um, require more uh, grommet points or loops along the way. So if I could tell Arcturus anything, I'd say, hey, you know, for the price range, even if it was a few bucks more, if they could, one, make the tarp a little bit bigger, five by seven, it's, it's okay for an emergency situation, but even a couple more feet in either direction, both directions, eight by eight, nine by nine, uh, even seven by seven would be better than the five by seven. Now, the last day of the, the course, we, uh, you had to make a shelter using this and sleep in it. So I've slept in, under this more than once. Um, I've used a couple of different shelter types and it's not gonna fit your whole family. You'd be lucky if it fits you and your, your pack, but um, for an emergency situation, it'll help you. So overall for 20 bucks, I think it's a, a steal. 
But um, again, I'm just going to show you the things that I think make it a, a better upgrade that if you're going to buy some for 20 bucks and you have a roll of um, paracord and I got these steaks from Home Depot for like, I don't know, three, four bucks. They're, they're not, they're nothing fancy, but um, it also changed my game on some of the things what I would include in my vehicle that if this is in there, more things that are orange. So like a triple X cotton t-shirt I got from Walmart for like four bucks that I could throw on over whatever I'm wearing and make me seem not like secret, secret squirrel, but more like, hey, here I am. Um, during the land navigation course, my partner at the school, he had an orange shemag and he had it packed into his pack. Then when we were piggybacking to do the, the land navigation with the compass through the woods and all that stuff, I was following this because it stood out against the, the canopy and the contrast of, of the ground and um, the forestry. So I've always had orange bandanas for similar things. You could hang something and mark your, your spot. You hop off your hiking trail to go use the bathroom and you come back and you just take it back down and, and, and mark yourself further along the way. So again, these are just things that I'm going to include with my stuff so that, again, it's a set it and forget it type of thing. It's not a uh, I'm bugging out, never coming back. This is like either... Uh, break down in the middle of nowhere and your vehicle is not your your best shelter or whatever for all the what ifs that i can't think of that if i'm like oh my god i gotta get out of my car i gotta like start walking and i gonna need, need to bring something with me then in case i need to make shelter along the way this is what i'm gonna be using for uh for that type of oh my god situation all right so for the first part of this you're really just gonna need a roll of uh gorilla tape duct tape but you know gorilla tape is just really good uh high quality works really well and all I did was, I, I probably did it more than I needed to, but um, again, I, I want to set it and forget it and have it hold in uh, wind, rain, whatever. So you kind of just mark where it's going to go. I did this on both sides, all four corners. Measure, come on, measure tear, layer, and one of the spots where it kept ripping from was not just around the grommet, but along the, 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 the seam, the, the threading over here. So when I made my corners, I went past that, again, on both sides. You know, I saw other guys um, doing a similar thing and just, just not going as in-depth. You see how fast this is going. You're doing this at home when you got time and you know, there's nothing, uh, it's, it's not the emergency because I wouldn't want to be doing this, you know, under duress. You know, I don't, I don't want to be worrying about this. I want to get this set up and have this ready to go. I yank it out of the bag, whatever container I have it in. Uh, I always have a, like a cargo bin in the back of my truck and have this thing in there, grab it and get, get to work. I think Gorilla Tape is the best thing on the planet. I was always a, a fan of duct tape, but this stuff is just like bulletproof. All right. So now again, here's my four, my, uh, try to make that flat. Fold it over. Fold it over, fold it over, and just mash it in good. Get a good, good tight grip, good seal. And I also do it tight enough, I don't know if you can see this, but I wanna be able to see where the grommet is because I'll show you how we, I attached the utility line ahead of time. But what I did was, without cutting through the tarp itself, I find where the point is, and I just make a, Punch the hole. Think of like when you get like a, I don't know, a soda from, you know, fast food place or whatever. And you punch punch a straw through that like, it's a hole. It's got like the, the slices in it already. So I don't have a marker in my pocket, but let's see. You get it? All right, so now I'm gonna do this four times around. You don't need to watch the whole thing. I'll get it set up and then we'll come back and do the line, okay? 
All right, so I got all four corners taken uh, taken care of. I have uh, I reinforced all the grommets and uh, corner tie-out points. Now I'm just going to put three X's on the center of this as big as I can. Um, just about all my configurations, especially if I was going to use it where I was trying to get somebody to be able to see me from above, would have it, uh, you know, more wide than tall. I would put it on, I guess, like what do you call it, landscape mode if you were printing something out. So again three X's in a row on top of something like this in a, you know, forestry, whatever. I guess we'll do the middle one first. So I kind of judge how big from there. It's probably easier if I did it on my driveway, but just let it do. The duct tape, or the Gorilla Tape rather, is such a great resource for so many different things. Oh my God. You could use it as a fire starter. Um, if you have a lighter or something, or maybe if you pulled the, the strands out one at a time, maybe with a fire seal, but definitely with a, a lighter, you get that thing going. Use it to repair other stuff. Use it as a band-aid to close a wound, a butterfly stitch. There you go. Are they perfect? No, but it's three X's and hopefully you'll be able to spot that from the air. So uh, that's one side. I'm going to hit up the other side and I'll get back to you in a second. All right, so I just stopped the camera just for a second because I uh, ran out of Gorilla Tape. So a good, good rule of thumb is always have a spare full roll of Gorilla Tape. And I'm using, uh, it's like the two inch wide by 35 yards, 48 millimeters by 32 millimeters. And I have rolls of these things, like still in the wrapper, uh, all over the place. They're not cheap, but man, they're worth it. So I'm gonna say that I was, I had about, I'm gonna say less than a half a roll when I started this project just now, in case you're wondering how much uh, tape you would need to do this. Um, I'd say about a half a roll. Um, but again, you, if you're going to buy a roll because you don't have any Gorilla Tape, buy two rolls. So whatever project you're going to do, leave it in your junk drawer, or around the house, wherever you're going to use it, and uh, have a spare roll. And when you tap into that spare roll, buy another roll. And as you get, you know, uh, better, you know, you start to realize all the different uses of Gorilla Tape, uh, you'll start having full rolls all over the place. And they come in one inch wide too. Um, it's just, just, it's great stuff. All right, there we go. All right, so for the next part of this, you're gonna need uh, some 550 cord or power cord, uh, a sharp knife or a pair of scissors, and a lighter. I like Bic lighters. Um, again, because I'm trying to go with something that's high visibility, everything for this kit's going with uh, blaze orange or you know that fluorescent orange, day glow orange, whatever they call it now. All I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna take about, you know, as far as I could reach, for me, that's about six feet. If you're short and you wanted to go with six feet, go with six feet. What you do is you're gonna cut your line and seize it because paracord is a bunch of little strands of uh, nylon twirled together and then inside of a sheath. So if you don't uh, burn the end and kind of like, you can press it against the side of your lighter or, or whatever, but if you don't melt it shut and melt it together, uh, it'll start unraveling on you and you just have a big mess. And here's how I seize it. It's just, again, take a lighter. I got a little bit of wind going. Um, I try to hold it with my, my hand and pull the sheath, like this, the orange coloring part, over the this cord, the string. The little strings that are in there. It starts to melt down. Come on. And once it melts, you can just kind of mush it together with your fingers. You could press it against the side of your lighter, however you want. Roll it up, make it tight. Again, if there's any frame, frame parts, you just burn them off. Good to go. All right. So I have about a six foot line of uh, 550 power cord. What I'm gonna do is make a bowling knot. Bowling knot, there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, 
I have a whole other video just on knots. You, I'll put a card up top. You can watch that. I'll show you real quick on here. One way to do a bowling knot is I'm going to make a, a small loop like so. So the short end goes underneath and through the loop, around the long end, and then back into the loop. There's a saying about the rabbit coming out of the hole, through the hole, around the tree, back in the hole, something like that. And when you're done, it's a locking knot. That's one way to do it. And again, it's, a, it's not a slip knot, so it'll hold tight and it won't come out. Just real quick, that, that's the only knot you need to make on this. You could use a stop knot on the other end, which would be an overhand knot. Wrap it around two times. And now you have a stop knot on the end. Uh, most of my utility lines, I always have a, a six foot length of cord in my pocket and it'll have a bowling knot on one end, a stop knot on the other. For this, the other way to make a bowling knot is, we'll have another video on the Marlin spike hitch. Oh my God, what a, what a useful knot that thing is. But I kind of like make a loop, put the loop on top of itself, put the loop on top of the, the long piece of cord and I push the long piece of cord through and you get this kind of like hole or tunnel there. So again, I make a loop. I lay the loop on top of the cord, the long piece. I pull that piece through and you have this little loop here. I take my short end and I'm just gonna put it through that and, uh, and pinch it against itself. Now I know that if I use two fingers, I'll wind up with a, a loop about that big in the bowlin. So I put the two fingers through, I hold the two pieces of that, not and I just kind of cinch it up a bit and there's a the bowling all right so now I'll show you how we work it worked I'll make three more and I'll show you how we put it on the uh, the tarp all right so I got four of those utility lines uh, each one's about six feet long I'm gonna take the tarp I'm gonna put it the bowl in through the grommet the the bowling pops through I feed the bowling through itself And now this way, on all four corners, I have my, again, there's only four grommets, there's only four attachment points. And if you have these all in place already, then you could um, get a ridge line up, which I have a whole other video on how to get a ridge line up. And you attach this to the ridge line. There we go. One, two, three, four. All right, all set. All right guys, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut it short here because this video is already running way longer than I wanted it to. I've been promising a lot of my subscribers that I would try to make them shorter, especially my family who watches me edit them. So uh, we're gonna cut it short and make this a two-part series. One on uh, you know how I set up the tarp and how we get the shelter going too. All right, so make sure you stick around for the next one. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you gotta have it, make sure you hit the bell notification button so YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find us on all social media platforms at Five Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.